Hey, talkers, it's your girl Q. I know, oh my god, that was so bad. Um, I have a cold, you guys, and I just sniffled on the mic, and I am so sorry, but um, I'm going to try to talk to you guys today, because I really want to talk to you guys. I haven't spoken to you guys in two days, and as the dates are getting closer for me to leave New York, I feel like New York is trying not to let me go by giving me a cold a week before I have to go, literally. So this cold better be gone ASAP. And it's like one of those nasty, it's like a head cold where like my nose is really clogged and my throat is like itchy but hurt but itchy and my nose just keeps running by itself. Like I'm talking to you guys and my nose is running and I have to keep blotting my nose. So I feel like in my mic you're going to hear like in and out, in and out. But this is the nastiness that goes on with me. I like to talk about the nastiness so people understand that we're all human and we all have nasty things that happen in our bodies, right? Talk about nasty things that happen in our bodies. Let's talk about babies. (laughs) I know, right? What's wrong with me? But no, I really want to talk about babies. I want to talk about more so children in general. Being in a relationship that already comes with that baggage. Now, if you guys listen to all my previous episodes I always talk about how I don't want no guy with no kids I want to be the one to be your first and you'll be my first I don't have any kids I want us to enjoy having babies together I want us to go through the whole experience together I don't want to come with someone who's already seasoned in the game where they already know what's going on why can't we both freak out together like if I'm not feeling good I want you to not feel good If I'm getting pregnancy cravings, I want you to get pregnancy cravings. I don't want you to tell me already what to expect and what not to expect. Let us both read that book together. You know that book, What to Expect When when Expecting? You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like, I want that experience for the both of us. However, with my age and the climate of this world, everyone already got babies. Like, I'm 28. Every guy that I possibly talk to has at least one seed, at least one. And I always talk about this because I'm not for this baby mama drama, honey. I am not for it. That's not for me. I'm not worried about your baby mama saying I don't want that girl or that bee around my babies. No, you can't see your kids because you're dating her. And every time I see her, it's a problem. That's not my life. I'm a drama free is the way to be. Okay, honey, that is my life. But that whole thing of like having issues and a guy being caught in the middle or a girl being caught in the middle, you'll be surprised. There's a lot of men that don't like a lot of new men around their kids. So I like all of that not for me like a quick story um the guy I was dealing with I keep talking about him because he was like my most recent summer fling so you know I'm gonna talk about the things that I went through within the past three months of the summer fling but he wanted me around his kid and I straight up asked him I was like what does your baby mom think about that and he was like oh I'm not gonna tell her yet I'll wait till the time is right for me to tell her. Then the answer is going to be no. I'm not going to be around your kid if your baby moms don't know I'm around your kid. It it just doesn't work out for me that way because I I would think about if the roles were reversed. I wouldn't want someone, if I don't want someone around my kid, I'm not going to sit here and do that to another woman. Like, it's not right. If I'm dealing with somebody and I had a kid and, a, and we end up going our separate ways, I would hope for you to come to me and tell me who's going to be around my kid. Because kids are very influential. They, like, they're sponges. So if you're bringing the wrong type of person around my kid, they're going to absorb that energy. They're going to absorb those characteristics. And then next minute, my kid is acting out and acting a certain way. And I'm asking myself, I don't act like that. Your father don't act like that. Where you get that from? Oh, the girlfriend that daddy had us around taught us to act this way. Then next minute, I'm going to have a real big problem. So I get it. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not 
one of those kids love me. I'm really not one of those. Like kids just love me. I I interact with kids. However, there are some times like I'm not gonna lie, I don't really feel like being around kids. <laughs> like my family sees it, my family knows it. When oh excuse me you guys, I'm getting like real blockage right here. Um when my family has like people over with kids, these kids just like run to me. They're just like stuck on me. They only want to be in my hand, even babies. I'll be laying in my bed. They'll come bring me the baby like, oh, look at the baby. I don't know what it is, but my ovaries just like wrap around these kids and they just fall right asleep in my arms and I'm chilling. And as soon as you pick them up, they're ready. They're crying. They're upset. I I just got a gift. Thank you, Jesus. I hope my kids are as attached to me as other people's kids are. I really hope that because God knows um, I hope. But kids just love me. I don't like them sometimes, but I love them sometimes. <laughs> you get that? Like, it's a 50-50. Some days I want them. Some days I'm like, eh, I ain't ready for that. But there are days where I, I see a baby and I just want to cuddle up with them. And my ovaries are actually talking to me right now. Now I'm getting baby fever while talking about this. But what I was really trying to get to is that When you're dealing with somebody and let's just say you guys finally take it to the next level, right? And you guys are ready to really talk about being committed to each other. And this person already comes with the baggage of kids, whether it's one or two, three or four, but they already have that baggage. Us as women and men as well, but I'm going to speak on the women's part right now. When we have a kid and we're dealing with a guy, we wait and see how this guy interacts with our kid because one that lets us know what kind of father you're going to be how you really going to treat this relationship because the way you treat my kid is the way you're going to treat me if you don't have love for my kid then I can't have love for you because it's a package deal it's not like you choose you pick this one but you can let this one go it doesn't work that way and vice versa when you're dealing with a guy they tend to see how you are with kids and I feel like guys are more focus on that than women are like we're quick to be single parents and be independent and like do our own thing next like that's our motto but with guys they really look to see how you interact with their kids because women are more motherly figures than guys are they're more like the consoling person than the guy is in a relationship so Although, like, I know a guy wouldn't want to be in a relationship where they can pick up their kids and just drop them off to you. But they would love that. They would love to be able to have you as second mother. Guys are quick to adapt that term mom. Like, they're quick to put that on you. Like, you're a mom. Like, I want you to be a mom to my kids. And us as women, we're not quick to be like, oh, we need you to be a dad to our kids because the kid got a dad. Like, they got a father. You don't want to be a father. That's on you. But that's just also going to give us an idea of how far this relationship is going to go. But guys are quicker to want to put that title on you, especially if you don't have that title in general. They want that title for you. So... When you're in that relationship and whatever guy you're dealing with comes with that package, they're quick to see how you interact with their kids. That tells you, all right, let me see what you're going to do in the future. Now, if you already have a kid, they watch to see how you are with your kid because that lets them know when we have a kid, what's going to happen. Now, if you're quick to, like, brush off their kid, you don't want their kids around that much, and, like, putting their kids in the back burner... That sets red flags in their head. Now, these are conversations, if you guys are taking things to another level, you should have in general in the beginning. Now, don't get me wrong because baby mama problems also puts a strain on the relationship and also puts a strain on the relationship with the kid. Like, if I'm dealing with someone that has a kid and I'm trying to be there for his kid, and the baby moms is constantly, like, pushing me away, like, you don't want to be mean to the kid, you don't want to be, like, distant from the kid, but you have the baby mama constantly in your ear 
or in the guy's ear talking about you being around their kid. So that also puts like that strain where you're like, I want to be around this kid, but I really don't want the drama attached to that. I don't want like, you know how parents are with kids when you send your kid to someone's house, right? This is what we do. Everybody does it. When the kid comes back home, we start questioning the kid. What did they do for you? Did they feed you? Did they hurt you? Did they hit you? Did they say something to you? What's going on? Tell me what the house looked like. Where did they put you? How did they talk to you? Like, these are the questions we pose the kid. And then what initially happens is that now every time the kid comes over, they become a reporter. They start taking notes about all the questions that mom asked them last time that they didn't have an answer to. So now they come over again and start taking notes to be able to give mom the answer that mom was asking last time. And then that's how the kid gets in the middle. And also that's how the kid grows the hate for the other parent or I should say the girlfriend or the wife or the fiance. But that's how the kid ends up growing that hate because they start seeing how mom acts. And be like, hmm, if mom doesn't like her, then I shouldn't like her. Because, you know, the kid is always going to side with whatever parent. But all you have to do, honestly, is just keep doing your best. Keep being a parent. Just keep treating the kid right. Because eventually, if you keep going right, the kid is going to come back to mom and be like, I don't know why you don't like her, but she's cool. I like her. She treats me right. We have fun. Whenever I have a problem, I go to her and she, she's good. And that also changes the mindset of the other parent because it's all jealousy. That's all it is. It's jealousy. It's um, envy. It's just like, oh, so we're done. You, we're, oh, we're really done. Like, we're really, really done, right? It's always, you know how relationships are done, but they're not really done? Nah. When you finally start bringing your kid around somebody else and that person starts parenting your kid, you're really, really really done all right so sometimes it's hard to get that into your mind but honey I get it yo I get it I get it I get it I get it this whole being in a relationship being with kids dynamic it's annoying it's annoying lord just find me a man that does not come with that baggage I'll deal with the other baggage but this baby mama baggage is not for me And Jesus Christ, you know, watch him put me with someone that got like five kids, right? (laughs) My life. Hashtag. But that's just like, there's just that epidemic of baby mama drama. And that also causes a strain on the relationship with your future, whatever you're with. Because you want to have kids with this person. You want to build a family, but they come with their family already. And it's hard for you to also pull away from that. And what sucks about it is that you don't want the baby mama drama. Now, this is where you start to play the devil's advocate, right? You don't want the baby mama drama, but you also don't want your man to be close to the baby moms. You'd be like, why are you so friendly for it? Why are y'all still close? Y'all still got feelings for each other? What's the problem? So it's like you don't want them to have a problem, but then you also don't want them to be close. So now you're just like... What do you do with that? And I actually want to talk to people who have this, like, dynamic where, dynamic, I can't even talk to you guys, have the dynamic because I would like to know, which do you guys prefer? Do you prefer the baby mama drama where you're like, you know what, I'll just stay away from the baby moms, but the kid I can take care of? Or do you want your man to have a close relationship with his baby moms, but then you start to run things in your head where you're like, are they still fucking? Are they still together? Do they be throwing little flirt texts to each other? Is this text really about the kids today? Or what y'all really talking about? You get what I mean? So, like, there's different... I feel like there's... You start straddling the fence with that. And I'm not gonna lie to you. That, that to me, is a problem. Because I'm like... I don't want my man close to his baby moms, but then, yeah, I also don't want problems with the baby moms because I want you to know that what's yours, what's his isn't mine. So 
that kid is his. I'm going to take care of that kid like it's mine as well. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not over here trying to take mommy title. That's your title. You buried that kid. You gave birth to it. That is all yours, boo-boo. That is not for me. But stepmama, I'll take that title and I will be the good stepmama. But Lord, please don't bless me with no kids yet. Please don't bless me with men with kids because I ain't ready for that. I don't want that. But if it comes, just give me the strength, <laughs> the wisdom, and the power, honey. That is, that's what I need because I don't do that drama at all. At all. All right? Let alone dealing with somebody that got... Now this is where it becomes a little, you know, me become a little racial where I'm like Hispanic baby moms. I can't, I feel like I can say that because I have Dominican in my family, like real Dominican in my family. I'm not one of those Haitians that claim to be Dominican and probably got like the next, 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 next cousin was the Dominican. Like, no, grandma's Dominican. Like, I got real Dominican in my family. Auntie's Dominican. And them people are crazy. They're crazy. Like, I know Haitians are crazy, but Dominicans are crazy too. Y'all be bugging sometimes. And my cousin, I... If my cousin listens to this, you know exactly who I'm talking to. And if my family listens to this, you know exactly what crazy cousin I be talking about. But, like, I love y'all to death. Love you guys to death. Y'all my family. I will rock for you guys to the day I die. But y'all are crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy people. I don't want to deal with that. (laughs) Like, don't want to deal with that. But let me know, you guys. Shoot me an email. If you're in that... Oh, God, I'm so sorry, you guys. I sound really disgusting on this. Like, I'm all, like, yeah, yeah. That was, like, a real large amount of mucus. I know I'm really disgusting. If you guys are throwing up while listening to this, I sincerely apologize. But um, let me know. If you're in that epidemic where you're dealing with someone that comes with the baby mama package already, how do you deal with it? Is it good? Is it bad? Are they friendly? Are they envy? Like, well, what? Well, how do you deal with it? What's some? What's some advice you can give to us who are in the new relationship that have that baby mama situation, or is going through it right now and don't know what to do? Let me know. Shoot, shoot me an email, and I will definitely tell everybody about it. My email is info at qtalks.com. I'm also going to put in the description. Or DM me on Instagram. My DM is at Q Talks. I've been getting a lot of DMs and a lot of new followers on my social media. And I thank you guys for listening and following and, like, liking. Like, I, I sincerely appreciate it because that makes me feel good. It makes me feel like you guys are listening. And I love it. And I love it. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. I just got to repeat it because I love it. And keep doing that, you guys. Shoot me emails. DM me spread the word let people know about q talks and we're out here we're just sitting down and we're just talking that's all we do right and don't worry when i get back to la we're gonna have a a little bit more added to the show we're gonna start having talks with other people all right all right till later you guys bye